the sales from Slovenia came to Palma and the only thing we had to do was to fit the Code Zero cable and furl it. So we just came back from, from Slovenia with a couple of sales that were made there. Uh, we brought them with a the van to Palma. We also have a couple of new sail bags that we're gonna have to put labels on, paint the logos, fit the sails on, and we'll be good to go. I have a rather important job to do, is uh, specifying and ordering new anti-torsion cables. It can be a bit stressful because these cables are super expensive. For example, this Code Zero cable will be more than 10,000 euros, so you can't really afford it making any mistakes. You really want a top quality cable. And as you can see, this cable is just massive. So what we do here is, this time is a bit easier than usually, because we have the old cable, and we know that this cable worked fine. So we're just gonna copy the length and build a new sail around existing length of the cable. So when, let's say, designing or ordering a new cable, we work with our partners Armada on this one. We have our CFD study, so we know the loads on the sails. So computer modulation tells us the, uh, the loads. And then we pass this information to Armare, and then they do their own calculations so we don't have to worry about it. So we ask for a specific working load and they figure out how much material they need to use. And we had no option of reusing the old cable because it was slightly damaged, it was quite old, and we don't want any problems with the cable because you want the cable to be as strong as it should be. Anti-torsion cable is important for a Code Zero sale in that it helps or hinders, in some occasions, the furling ability of the sail. You want a sail that will furl quickly when the conditions turn against what it should be used for. El cable anti torsión en una vela como un código cero actúa como el soporte rígido que va a aguantar el haz de la vela. Por ejemplo, en las mayores tenemos el mástil. En el código cero es una vela que diríamos que vuela. No hay un soporte, no hay un trozo rígido de barco que aguante el lap de la vela. Como no existe, la vela viaja con un cable dentro del lap. Ese cable va a ser donde la vela va a estar enganchada y aparte donde la vela se va a enrollar. El cable va a rotar sobre sí mismo en el enrollador y la vela se va a enrollar alrededor del cable. Se llama antitorsión porque el cable no se debe girar sobre sí mismo, no se puede girar. El cable gira y actúa como una pieza rígida. Antitorsion cables are very stiff, essentially very stiff ropes. They contain a fair amount of matrix, or resin, let's call them, and that resin you know, breaks down if it's flexed continuously um, at very tight radiuses. So the precaution to be taken when handing over a, a Code Zero sail with an anti-torsion cable is to respect the minimum bend diameter for that cable. El código cero del INCO es una de las velas más grandes que yo he tenido que producir aquí dentro y a la hora de meter el cable y enrollar ha sido un reto. De hecho, es una vela que a nosotros dentro de la nave para enrollarla en condiciones propicias no nos cabía. Para solucionar esto hemos tenido que enrollar la vela fuera de la nave. Aquí tenemos una estructura metálica donde podemos colgar velas y aún así ha sido un reto. ¿Vale? Hemos tenido que proteger el suelo porque no queríamos arrastrar una vela por el suelo ni queríamos mancharla. Hemos tenido que ser 20 personas fuera uh, para poder tensarla bien y enrollarla bien. Creo que va a ser un día que no se me va a olvidar. Meter estas longitudes de cables y, y enrollar estas velas a mano uh, no es fácil. Pero bueno, uh, viendo cómo queda a bordo, uh, me quedo con un buen recuerdo. main is almost finished, just some details need to be done. Today we are working on the jeep, on the button system in concrete, and the plan and the goal is 
Let's finish all the button stuff. El foque del Inco ha sido bastante más sencillo que la mayor. Sí que es verdad que también es enorme, porque el, el LAF son casi 40 metros, pero no tiene tantísima cosa como es la mayor. Entonces, lo complejo es el sistema de sables. Aquí tenemos nuestro full-link button system, con el tension system también. Y básicamente, es un button pocket with a long tongue inside what it's attached with the bungee there. And here inside the pocket we have a lashing made with the bungee that allow us to give tension when we pull. That way we avoid all the traditional heavy finishing that we used to have here that we need to fit a velcro cover with the velcro tapes on the side that is a kind of disturbing leach finishing and that way we have a very light finishing and help us to have a, a very nice leach designed shape holding. It's basically what it is. A pocket with a dong with a bungee for tension in the button. Ahora mismo están preparando para laminar el la club y colocar el boomerang, entonces están perfilando todo para poder pegar y una vez esté pegado podremos trimar y empezar a, a detallar lo que es la club. The boomerang is the corner of the jib or of the staysail that gets connected to the sheet. So you control the jib or the staysail through the clue. In this particular jib clue we have fitted a a composite, carbon composite boomerang. And it's unique in that it's extremely lightweight for its working load, and it is laminated to the sail. Otra vez se laminó los puños a la vela. Una vez laminados, tuvimos que ubicar la posición correcta de, de este boomerang de carbono. La instalación del boomerang fue básicamente eh, ubicarlo en posición, hacer unas perforaciones a la vela para poder pasar los rimaches, digamos, que es por donde a través de estos rimaches o hollados usamos estos hollados para el alineamiento de la posición. Una vez que estuvo todo perforado y cortado y formado a la forma del boomerang, se aplicó el material, el cual usamos un pegamento bastante fuerte y a su vez elástico. Se pusieron los hollados para alinearlo y usamos unos gatos para darle presión suficiente para que esto puede, eh, quede bien, bien pegado entre sí. En los hoyos que dejan estos hollados es por donde conectas la vela al barco. And it has different holes to locate the sheet. So you can choose different holes depending on different wind strengths and conditions and your, your course to the wind. Once again, the beauty of 4T is that we can do that. We can laminate a hard point to a corner and we know that the load will be transferred to the entire sail because these fibers are starting at the glue and in uninterrupted fashion from the same reel without any cuts of any sort anywhere, that fiber is going to go all the way to the head of the sail. I know that the clue is the application point of the staysail or jib sheet and I know that the staysail or jib sheet, its load is going to be transferred throughout the whole sail without any hard points or overlaps or joins. The tricky part here is as we have a huge lamination inside, the result is a very stiff and very hard corner. And this is always hard to work with because uh, we need to manage to fit it under the sewing machine and it's a bit of a challenge. But at the end, the, the work is totally worth it. What we have here is the spliced tail on the leech line overhead. This works when we want to reef the sail and we want to, the leech line to hold the same load as when the sail is completely hoisted. Then what we will have here is a 
webbing that end, and this will be here attached with the lashing, and this works like this. If the lead line is stretched, the dead end on the webbing and on the, on the splicer tail will be also stretched. Okay, what we can see here is a pocket for height, the leech line purchase. Here we have almost 40 meters leech and the sheeting angle will be super vertical. Because of that, we decide to fit here a five to one purchase with those blocks. That way, if the, the captain or whatever is driving the boat uh, wants to tension the leech line, just pull in a line that will be here across the cleat, easily we'll be able to tension all the leech line, avoiding all the flapping, avoiding all the undesired leech shapes. What we are seeing now is the last dead end for the leech line. All the leech line overhead will be hold by this webbing and is the last piece of it. El balumero lo utilizamos para tensar la baluma cuando estamos en navegación, entonces podemos tensar, tenemos un sistema de desmultiplicación del cabo para poder tensar desde una posición cómoda en el barco y poder recoger un poco más la vela, que se acorte más. As we work on a self-tacking fulling jib, we need to fit what we call laugh foam or laugh rope. On that case, as you can see, we have a laugh rope. And this is just to help the sail to have a nice fold. What I mean, let's imagine that we have here a super thick forestay and the sail while furling needs to fit perfectly around the forestay to have a, a nice fold to help the membrane to live long and to don't have any wrinkles or whatever. Because of that, on that sail we have internal pocket for the ropes. This way we don't need to fit anything external. And what we have done is we pass a long button to fit a mouse line inside. And with that mouse line, we fit this rope. This rope will be, will be fixed on the head and we'll have a bungee on the deck just to avoid the rope to go up if the rope rings itself. We are very close to the end of the self-production and for now it has been a challenge but everything is on his place. We have our way to embellish the end of the lav rope and that way help us to avoid the water to go in because inside we seal it, the pocket with the insignia and with the stitching. At the end it results a simple and nice way to fix the rope to the head. Para el foque hemos utilizado tres fundas internas en la membrana para añadir el cabo de enrollado del grátil. Eh, es un sistema novedoso y ha sido bastante satisfactorio verlo que cuando está montada la vela pues se ve uniforme y no tiene ninguna arruga, está, está bastante bien. On that sales we decided to use a painted UV band instead of a textile one. This is because the painted is lighter and the results are super nice because the, the aesthetic look of the sail is monochromatic and that's also a nice detail. It's a bit tricky because we need to do the perfect paint mix and if not, uh, we can risk all the, the UV protection that we are putting on on the sail, but it's totally worth it. I mean, the, the result is always a super good looking finishing and as you can see, the paint is a very nice finishing for a racing sales like that.
La pintura UV se utiliza para las velas que normalmente dejamos enrolladas y expuestas al sol prolongadamente y son protectoras, simplemente para que la membrana no se dañe. Ok, ha sido un largo día hoy y estamos con las últimas detalles. Por ahora, tenemos que terminar con los dos Uh, both station and jeep food uh, UV band painting. As I said, it's been a long day, but I can see the light at the end of the tunnel and tomorrow will be the last victory. We have the possibility to customize the product in order to fulfill the needs of our customer. The customer wanted a very particular aesthetic, a dark grey body with light grey tapes. Esta pieza ha sido customizado para este barco. Nos esforzamos en que la bolsa fuera un facilitador a la hora de montar y desmontar y almacenar las velas. 